What's going on guys? Aaron from Top Tier Gaming here and today I'm coming at you with sort of a how to play for Generator Runic. I uploaded my Top 16 Regional Deck Profile a few days ago and yeah I think uh, how to play is sort of mandatory with this deck because it does have a lot of interesting combos, 2 and 3 card combos and I'm just going to show some of those uh, before we get into the hand test and I'm going to show a few hand tests to show you guys how this deck works in practical play. Also, I'm recording this on Sunday, it's probably going up Tuesday or Wednesday, and we don't know when Konami's dropping a ban list, right? So, I'm making this video under the assumption nothing in this deck is hit. If I expect anything in this deck hit, it might be like a Runic Tip or Runic Fountain hit, because like, Runic Stun's been running around, and like, Runic decks have been good for a long time. If that happens, it doesn't change anything with the list, and Runic Tip you can just replace with like, two other Runic spells. It's not a big deal, so I don't think the ban list will affect this video, but if it does in a tremendous way, I'll just remake it, but, you know, as a YouTuber and you're doing Yu-Gi-Oh! content, you can't really just sit and wait for the ban list, because we actually have no idea when it's coming, but, uh, yeah, with all that being said, before we get into the combos, I do want to let you guys know, uh, we are getting close to 15,000 subscribers, so feel free to like and subscribe, you know, like this video so we can beat the YouTube algorithm. With all that being said, let's hop into the first combo. Which is going to be a two card combo with any runic spell and monstrosity. And there's actually two different branches with this combo. I'm going to show both. The first one is for when you're going first. And what you can do with just these two cards, which is pretty impressive. So we're going to start off with the runic tip. And we're going to special summon Slightmere. We'll just use this as the graveyard over here. And this is our hand down here. Uh, from here you're going to activate the world legacy monstrosity to special summon Vela and Hela. Now from here you're going to overlay the Schleipnir and the Vela to make Enter Blathnir. Now with Enter Blathnir effect we are going to activate and we are going to banish one random card from our opponent's hand. We're going to make sure we detach the Vela, not the Schleipnir, that's very important. And so we banish one random card and then we're going to use the Hela effect, tribute herself, target the Vela, special summon the Vela, Vela effect on summon, special the Hela. And we can go ahead and overlay these two into the second Enter Blathnir, which is going to allow us to banish another random card in our opponent's hand. I'm going to detach the Vela, although here it really doesn't matter. So we banish two, and then you can overlay both of the Enter Blathnirs here. Go into the Utopic Future, and then overlay for Utopic Draco Future. And essentially those two cards, uh, with like nothing else in your hand, right, gets you two hand rips from the opponent and a pretty strong Monster Negate. Uh, which doesn't seem like much, but again, that's just one of the two card combos. If you have any other extenders, it can go crazy. And there is a three card combo I'm going to show. But first, I want to show where the branch is for this because this is mostly going first. I'll show you what you do with Monstrosity going second. So we're back in this setup earlier where we used a Runic spell to special the Slightmere and we Monstrosity specialing Hela and Vela. And from here, it's very similar, except we go for, you know, more go second card. So we overlay the Slightmere and the Vela. And we go for like the best card in the deck, which is the Levitane. And then we can use Levitane's effect to steal two cards they control and attach them under Jormungandr. And now with Jormungandr here, there's actually several things you can do. If, Jorman, if you need to find a play, like you only had this two card combo, you might want to activate the Jormungandr so you can try to get somewhere better. Uh, but more often than not, you know, activating Jormungandr can be quite risky. So I'm just going to show this in the most simplest terms. You're going to want to activate Hela, tribute the Jormungandr. And you want Jormungandr off field so that you can make another one, uh, pretty much. Special summon the Vela. Now this one also branches going second just based on like what your opponent has because you can actually use Vela's effect to special summon back the Jormungandr uh, if they only have like one other card you need to get rid of. And if you special the Jormungandr, you make Enter Blath near here, banish one extra card, and you can still make Utopic Future. But most of the time when you're like breaking a board, you're gonna end up wanting to like not special summon. Uh, just overlay these and go for the second Levitan. And then you can use his effect to make another Jormungandr. And then it's all based on your opponent's board, right? Like if they have less cards for you to deal with, you can obviously set up more interrupts by going for less Levitan. And you can go for like Enter Blathnir, banish a card in their hand or grave, make you Topic Future, which gives you an interrupt. If they don't have that much to remove, you can leave this Levitan on board for their turn and it's a huge interrupt. Uh, but yeah, that's sort of the two card combo on to the three card combo. Alright, so this combo is still Freezing Curses, or any Runic Spell I should say, and Monstrosity, and also the Boss Stage, which 
So, I should also mention, when I'm showing these three-card combos, I'm showing, like, specifically Monstrosity, Freezing Curses, Boss Stage, but this works in a bunch of different three-card iterations. Like, if you have Lopter here, it's fine, because it gets you to Mardell, which gets you to Boss Stage. If you have, like, Diviner plus an extra Runic Spell, which would be a four-card combo. Uh, no Monstrosity, so... If you also open Boss Stage, a Diviner Double Runic Spell you get here. There's a lot of versions of this, you don't have to specifically open these three, but you have to find these three cards in hand. And this is where the deck gets actually crazy, and you can do a bunch of stuff turn one. Uh, and these are like the bread and butter three card combos, which sounds crazy, right? Because three cards, like how consistent is that? But I was doing this a lot at the regional and in all my test games, because it does come up quite frequently. So starting off, we're going to activate the Freezing Curses, and we're going to Special Summon Slightmere, and then we are going to activate Monstrosity, so this should look very standard uh, for how we have been playing it. I'm going to Special Summon the Vela, and I'm actually going to Special Summon Har. Now, you don't have to Special Summon Har in this situation. Um, I think it gets you the best end board. Then we're going to go ahead and activate the Boss Stage, and I'm going to overlay Schleipnir and the Vela into Jormungandr. And with the Jormungandr, I'm going to detach. And where both players are going to draw a card and then attach a card from their hand or field to Jormungandr. So you're going to attach a random card here that doesn't interrupt your combo. And they're going to attach probably the worst card in their hand. Now because your opponent drew, you're going to activate boss stages chain link 1. And if they have no response, you're going to activate Har to make them send a monster from their hand or graveyard. Which means you have hand ripped 1. Or from their hand or field to the graveyard. So you've hand ripped 1 from the opponent so far. And then the boss stage is going to special summon Mardell from the deck. And then Mardell's effect is going to add a generator card from your deck to your hand, which is going to be Hella. From here, I'm going to activate Vela's effect in the graveyard because we haven't activated it. I'm going to discard the Hella to special summon the Vela. Vela effect on field, special summon the Hella. So we just have a large amount of generator bodies on field right now. I'm going to overlay the Mardell and the Vela into Enter Blathnir, use the effect of Enter Blathnir, rip another card from our opponent's hand, so that is two hand rips now. Now there are iterations where you can play this more safe and then just instantly go for Utopic Future right here. And if they have Nib, you can still tribute the Har and the Hela to negate their Nibiru, and then you still go for the Utopic Draco Future, which is something I do, like overlaying these uh, to play around certain hand traps, but there's also a more aggressive version that still somewhat plays around hand traps just fine, uh, which is Hela, tribute the Jormungandr, Special summon a level 9, in this case I'll do Vela, because she's the only level 9 in my graveyard. Then you overlay the Hela and the Vela for the second Enter Blathnir, and then this Enter Blathnir detaches to rip another card from our opponent's hand, which is three hand rips, and then you go for the, you know, once again pretty standard hope here. Uh, the issue with this is that you're going to lose your Har at end phase, and at this point you're actually weak to Nibiru, which is the whole issue with going for this line, but... They've also had two chances, you've had two chances to rip the Nibiru, actually three. So that's one thing where it's like kind of safe around Nibiru, but not always. But you're going to end up here into the Utopic Future and the Utopic Draco Future. And this was a version that plays around Nib, otherwise you're going to want to use your Har for NXEs because he's going to go away at end phase because of monstrosity. But it's kind of fine because say he goes away on your next turn, so you hand ripped three. And then you have boss stage to special summon Vela from the deck. And then you go chain link one boss stage, chain link two Vela, Vela special out Har, and not the EMZ. Uh, and then you get your tokens, and you still hand rip three, so they start with three cards. And you have two negates and a force send, which should, in theory, deal with all of their cards. Plus, that was only three cards, you have two other cards in hand, right? So it's sort of like an FTK, and there's actually other lines where you can. Uh, leave the generator Jormungandr on your field and sort of force a hard rip and that can also there, there's a lot of lines you can branch off to in the three card combo but that's just the one I want to show because you know we're gonna do hand tests as well the others might come up but yeah that's sort of a basic three card combo for the deck the last combo I want to show um, still is kind of the same as the last combo. I just want to show this version. It's like the two card combo, but it's three cards, but it's important to know. Uh, and then we'll get into the hand tests, which I think are much more fun than just showing combos. But it's any two runic spells. Uh, I have just chose like the one ofs in the deck uh, and the diviner of the herald. And what's funny to note is all these hands have like used your runic spells, but you've never gotten to fountain. Um, so hopefully in the hand test I can show you why Fountain's like a good card in this deck, but otherwise they're just extenders, right? In this hand, I'm going to Normal Summon Diviner, 
and she gets impermed or veilered or ashed, right? That's sort of the point of this hand. So Diviner's been impermed or ash. Activate Runic Slumber. I'm going to special summon the Moonin. And then from here, you can synchro the Diviner and the Moonin to make your Ib. And then Ib effect can activate, and we're gonna add World Legacy Monstrosity to our hand. And we're gonna activate the Runic Spell to special summon Slightnir, as we have done before. And we're gonna activate Monstrosity, targeting the Slightnir to special summon the... I mean, once again, depends on what's in your hand, but you can either go for the two card combo that we've seen, the, which is the Monstrosity, and the, or it is the Vela and the Hela, and then you can just do the two card combo. Uh, but because you have Ib, sometimes I can go for Har and just try to do something with Har, because Har can actually tribute the Ib as a negate, which is nice. It, again, it just depends if you wanna play around Nibiru or not, or if it's worth playing around Nibiru, depending what the other cards in your hand are. But if you have nothing else, I definitely recommend going for this two card combo and going for the thing you've done in the first one I showed. But yeah, it just shows how Diviner can help you get to the monstrosity if you didn't open it and why we play the moon in, in the deck at all. All right, now we're going to get into the hand tests, which I think are much more fun because they're more practical. Like we can try to discuss some hand traps or maybe some go second stuff as well, but I just want to show sort of what the deck is trying to achieve. And you know, hand traps might actually help some hands in the hands where you have like talents, diviner, you kind of want her to get veilered or ashed or something. And then you can get farther than you thought you would maybe in a hand. It just sort of depends. This is where the more practical plays of the deck come into the forefront. So starting off, we're going to see a runic spell in flashing fire, the lopter, the diviner, the freezing curses, and the vela. So this is really strong to start with because you don't normally want to see both normal summons. Like you only run six normal summons gives you like a little over a 50% chance to see both of them, I think. Or no, I think it's even less than that. Um, if you're in six, you have like over a 50% chance to see one of them. But because we drew Vela, like drawing this Lopter is actually insane. And we opened the Diviner double runic spell that I just showed the combo for. So obviously we are going to start with the Diviner. And if she gets hand trapped, you obviously have the line to search for monstrosity, but we have more things we can do here just deciding how I want to go for it. We're not, I don't think we're gonna go for a line that gets to Fountain, which is unfortunate, but we can actually also get to monstrosity here, which might be cool to show. Uh, I'm just gonna activate the Diviner effect. She doesn't get hand trapped because that would be kind of boring for this hand test. I'm gonna dump the Trius to the graveyard. And just deciding on what line I wanna go to is rough because this is level 11, right? We're not doing any runic plays with it. But we do have a line where, first of all, we're going to tribute the Diviner for Trius. That much is definitely going to happen. Diviner effect is going to activate, and we're going to special summon DD Sprite from our deck. And I'm going to put DD Sprite in an EMZ just so we don't accidentally put anything else in an EMZ later. Because uh, one of my losses at the regional was because I put Har into the Anima Zone, and that was very cool. Um, but from here, we have a lot of options, right? So we can special or we, yeah, we can special summon Schleitnir with a Runic spell. And then we can use the Schleipnir and the DD Sprite to make Barone and protect the rest of our plays, which is super safe. I like it a lot. It's probably what I would do at a regional. Um, and then you would just go Barone plus like some level nine combos. You actually have the Jormungandr boss stage here as well. And I really want to show that, but there's a really nifty line that I'm just going to mention because I think it is very cool where you can special summon the Vela. Uh, by discarding the Lopter, special the Lopter, and you can actually use these two to make Ib, which I think is very nifty because that's one thing is you don't run Gary in this deck if you watch my deck profile. Uh, I do not run Gary. And this is actually how you make Ib with the DD Sprite is the Lopter uh, situation. But if you do that, you get Monstrosity, and then you can Monstrosity the Vela and special summon Mardell and like Hella from the deck, or Har, I think Har would probably be better. And you get your boss stage that way, but it it's definitely not safe into so many different hand traps. So I'm not going to do that. Just know that exists. Um, and like, if you feel like you need to high roll, you can go for that. Cause that is gonna get very, very far and would be very, very strong. But yeah, it's not safe at all. So I'm gonna go for the more safe line. I'm not gonna make Barone with Trius and DD Sprite. I don't like that at all. Now, this is summon three. So we are safe from Nib just by activating a runic spell. Special summoning the Slightmere. And then we're gonna take the DD Sprite and the Schleitnir because we don't want Trius to get banished. That'd be unfortunate because Trius is insane in the graveyard. And I'm gonna special summon Barone to flirt. Now Barone is gonna do a good job of like protecting our plate. This, I don't want this in the EMZ, by the way. I don't know why it's right there. You don't wanna summon it there. I'm gonna summon it. It's really hard because I know there's like a small glare over here. So fitting everything is always fun. 
Uh, but I'm gonna special summon Barone closest to the deck. Then we can go ahead, activate the Vela like we were going to do earlier, discard the Lopter, special the Lopter off the Vela effect, and next I'm going to tribute Lopter to special Mardell from deck. Mardell's effect is going to activate and get the ever so important boss stage because this card is insane, it's what you need for sure. Next I'm going to activate the boss stage, overlay the Vela and the Trius, and I'm going to make, I guess there's two paths here and just like thinking about which one I want can be rough because you can go for the Jormungandr, right? And you can use Jormungandr effect to draw and attach uh, and then your boss stage up here will trigger and you can special Hella, maybe go for a Hella line there. But I actually don't think that's worth it because like, again, I mentioned this in my profile, but Jormungandr is a very tricky card to use. You don't want to like sculpt your opponent's hand randomly. Um, if you do go for that line though, you get one less hand rip, but you get to keep your flashing fire. I just don't think it's worth it. Like, it's so tough to decide what's actually optimal, especially because it's been two weeks since I played this deck. Uh, but yeah, I think we want to go for the Enter Blathnir here. Discard, or banish a card in our opponent's hand. Also importantly, putting the Trius back in Graveyard because that's going to be an interrupt. And then we're going to activate the Flashing Fire, Special Summon the second Schleipnir from our extra deck. We're going to overlay with the Mardell to make the second Enter Blathnir. This is in Graveyard. Uh, and then you're going to banish another random card from our opponent's hand. So we've hand ripped two, and then we're going to turn both Enter Blathnir, of course, into our Utopic and our Draco Future. So, so we hand ripped two and ended with Boss Stage and uh, Barone, which is very, very strong, but it's so much more than that. So they're going to start their turn with only four cards. And if they hand trapped uh, your Diviner earlier, it goes, they might only start with three cards and you get somewhere pretty similar, actually, or better. All right, during our opponent's draw phase, boss stage is going to trigger, and it's pretty much protected because we have Utopic Draco Future that can stop Ash or Ogre on boss stage. We have the Barone that can stop something like uh, Cosmic. So in almost every game state, this boss stage is triggering and resolving. So we are going to special Har from our deck, and boss stage is then going to trigger, special summoning three generator tokens. So now they started with four cards in hand past their draw. They have to deal with an Omni Negate and Barone, an Omni Negate and Har, and a Monster Negate that's like really, really strong and problematic in Utopic Draco Future. So you have three Omnis. Then Har has a Force Monster Send, so you might just have three Negates for the only three cards in their hand, right? But you actually have more than that because you also have these three generator tokens that your boss stage just summoned, and you have Trius Engrave. And what you can do with these is you can tribute two of them to special summon Trius on your opponent's turn like a, uh, as a quick effect and pop a card they control which is very very strong. If you have if you don't have like Barone in that hand and you have another fairy here like a fourth generator token you can actually use this card's effect to pop one and draw two and still have the Harnegate. But yeah this is you have more interrupts than they have cards in hand so their cards would have to be very, very strong and trade with a lot through Barone and Utopic, which is just very unlikely. I'm gonna go through another hand test here. That was a, a pretty strong hand that had a lot going on with it. But yeah, I think that hand did show what the deck is trying to accomplish. It didn't have Monstrosity in it, which Monstrosity is where you get your really crazy hands, but obviously we're not gonna draw Monstrosity every hand. So for anyone who was thinking like, oh, this deck needs Monstrosity to play because all the combos were like based around it, I just wanted to show the monstrosity combos. Obviously this deck can do some insane stuff without monstrosity, uh, as shown in that hand, where we just had like Generator and Runic, and that's sort of what the deck does, right? So hopefully, if we do get a hand with monstrosity, I feel like we've almost seen them, but a five card monstrosity hand does sound pretty good. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and do another hand test, and we will draw Terraforming, oops, uh, Vela. So this hand's already very strong, I like this because I know I'm getting boss stage, I know I have Vela, uh, Trius, which can be good, Runic Flashing Fire, and Runic Tip. So this hand uh, started off kind of scary, but then got pretty good. I think the Runic Tip helped a lot. So see, normally you want a Runic Tip in draw phase and go ahead and find your Fountain and then not play into Droll, but we drew Trius, which means we can do some funny stuff with Hugin which I do like, and I like Hugin here more than just searching for Tip, where you just get Ash and it feels kind of bad. But is it gonna feel bad either way? I think I'm going to go ahead and probably go main phase. Mmm, it's really tough to decide what to do here. Cause you can also terraforming like chain runic tip, 
and then you play better around Droll and Lockbird because you'll get Fountain and like Boss Stage and you can hold on to one of them potentially. Is that worth it though? There's actually a lot of lines here. I didn't realize how... That's one thing about this deck is I'm still discovering stuff with it and I've played this deck for over like a month of testing and a regional with it where I top 16 and I still find stuff out about this deck and decide on what could be better here. There's a lot of different things we could choose to play around. Um, but I think in a hand test, I'm going to make it as simple as possible just so I can show what you kind of want to get to. And I'm just going to tip in the draw phase and search the fountain. And then I'll go into the main phase and I'll make the first search the terraforming because more than anything, we want to get to boss stage. I'm going to add the boss stage to hand. And then I'm going to activate the runic fountain. And I'm going to activate the flashing fire to special summon a Schleitmere. And then we are going to draw two with our Runic Fountain. We're going to put the Flashing Fire and the Tip to the bottom. Hopefully draw a Generator card or a Monstrosity. Either one would be insane here. We're going to draw Talents, which could be good, and Diviner. That is also a great draw because we kind of wanted that to go off there. Or we wanted to find a play is what I mean to say. Uh, so from here we drew Diviner. We can Normal Summon the Diviner. And deciding what to send is very interesting here. We could send Vela so that we can use Vela's effect from Graveyard, discard Vela, uh, which seems pretty strong. But there's also a much more risky line, which we do have talent, so maybe it's safe, and we will get to Barone, so I think I do want to do the more risky line. But we actually send Lopter off Diviner. And this is risky because it means we're going to actually use the boss stage in our hand, which could be bad, but I think with talents in hand and us getting to Barone here, it's probably just better to do this. So we are going to tribute the Diviner for the Trius, Diviner effect, summon that DD Sprite, and then with the DD Sprite and the Schleitner, we can then synchro into Barone as we have done in the past. And now we're left with uh, Trius and Barone, and we have this Vela boss stage in hand. So because we dump Lopter, there's actually a reason to activate the Vela effect. I'm going to discard the boss stage to special summon Vela, and I'm going to activate Vela to special summon the Lopter. Now I feel, again, I feel pretty safe about this position because we do have like multiple ways to deal with hand traps to some extent. Um, but again, this was the riskier line, but I also think it's the way better line. So I'm gonna tribute the Lopter to Special Summon Mardell. And then Mardell is gonna go ahead and trigger and add that boss stage we lost earlier. So we are still going to have the boss stage. We just end up getting much farther in this instant be instance because we were able to put the Vela on field and get, you know, generator stuff going. Now, earlier I had a combo where you didn't, like I didn't know what I wanted to do with the level nines. Like I could have gone for the Jormungandr and gone for that line, but I didn't want to activate Jormungandr's effect. Here, I think activating Jormungandr is actually mandatory to get where we want to go. So we are going to have to sculpt our opponent's hand a little bit. They don't go like positive on it, but we're not going positive on it either. It is just sort of what we have to do. I mean, we're kind of going positive on it because of boss stage, which I just played over the Runic Fountain, by the way. We're going to overlay the Trius and the Vela, which is pretty nice because they would both get banished if they left the field, but now they're safe as Xyz materials. I'm going to activate the Jormungandr's effect. Both the opponent and I are going to draw a card and attach a card from the hand or field to Jormungandr here. Now, interestingly enough, we drew Freezing Curses, which is a really strong card. So at this point, we have to decide if we think we can use Talents, if they're going to hand trap us. Uh, but we have Barone, who's going to negate an activation. Maybe they won't even get to do that. So I'm going to attach the Talents, which feels really bad, but having a Freezing Curses just does so much for us. Uh, in a regional, I'm probably keeping that. Uh, it just sort of depends, again, how I think... Like, the opponent would have done something by now, right? So they probably don't have something insane except for Imperm Nib. And then Freezing Curses still might be better than Talents in that situation. So, yeah, I think keeping the Freezing Curses is fine here overall because we have Boss Stage Trius. Uh, speaking of which, Boss Stage is going to proc and we're going to special summon a... Probably Hella from the deck. I'm thinking between Hella or just like Har... But, I mean, it really doesn't matter as long as boss stage does resolve next turn. But sometimes I like having Hella in deck for, like, better follow-up off of a boss stage. So, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get the Har. Because we're not going to end up tributing uh, the Jormungandr with Hella's effect. Because we've already used the Vela's effect in Graveyard, there'd be no reason to do that. Uh, I'm just going to overlay the Mardell and the Har. Go for an Enter Blathnir. Get a random hand rip from our opponent's hand. Oh, you know what? Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Like, there's always going to be a line for them to try to bestial the Har, which we probably would have to negate with Barone. 
Not always, but in this situation. So we got a hand rip one from our opponent, which is less good than normal, but uh, that's where this hand could go, so. We're going to overlay the Jormungandr and the Enter Blathmir, and we're gonna go for the Utopic Future into Draco Future once again. I believe we've seen this several times. I'm gonna actually set the Freezing Curses. This is gonna be set. Uh, and then what do we start our opponent's next turn with? Because it's actually a lot. So they only start with five cards. And they did get their hand sculpted by Jormungandr, so it might be better than normal. But boss stage is going to activate in their draw phase. Again, it's almost impossible for this boss stage to not resolve. They can do, like, double cosmic or, like, cosmic droplets or something like that, right? So, uh, Ash and Bell or, or, like, Ash and Ogre aren't really going to do it. So from this situation, I'm going to special summon the Vela because I want to leave the Hella in deck still, kind of. Like, it is better to start with... I mean, there's so many different ways we could go about this. Yeah, it just kind of stinks to lose the Hella. Ah, man, it's it's tough. It's tough. It, this is always just... It, it almost doesn't matter for a hand test, but, you know, I'm just going to special the Vela. Vela effect is going to bring back the Har. We're actually going to go uh, chain link one boss stage, chain link two Vela. Vela is going to bring back the Har, and then we're going to special summon generator tokens. So what we have is pretty nice. We have, they again, they're starting with only five cards because we did banish one randomly. We have a Hope Harbinger. I don't know why I said that. Utopic Draco Future. We have a Barone, so that's two interrupts. We have Har Omni Negate. We have Runic Freezing Curses to negate as well. We have Har's Force Monster Send. That's five interruptions. But once again, we have that Trius in the graveyard, who is going to be a pop. So we again have more interrupts than they have cards they're going to need something very strong to deal with this um so again we're not only still discarding cards from our opponent's hand but we are ending with more interruptions than they have possible cards in hand again the issue is we gave them a jormungandr draw and didn't har send on their turn so they got as much out of the jormungandr as we did which felt kind of bad but that's again just where this hand happened to go uh it could have been even better depending on fountain draws it could have been worse just sort of depends what they have and where we're getting. If we activate talents, it goes crazy. Um, but yeah, that's probably going to be it for this video. I showed two practical hand tests kind of going first, and I showed a bunch of combos. Uh, if I wanted to make like an hour-long video, I could probably show more, but I think I've shown what the deck is trying to do. I feel like anyone who watches this would be much more knowledgeable about uh, Generator Runic before they went into it with, so I think the video did what I am trying to accomplish with it. Um, if you have any other questions, because again, there's no way this could explain essentially what has been a month of learning for me with this deck. Uh, and again, I'm still finding cool new lines or options, things you could play to make it different. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll answer them because, again, I couldn't answer everything in this video. Uh, but I hope you guys did enjoy. Feel free to like and subscribe. This has been Aaron from Top Tier Gaming. Bye, YouTube.